My hairline trying to play me today. Okay. <laughs> All right, we'll just. Problem solved. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Yum. Yum. Oh my god. <laughs> good morning. Today is going to be a good ready with me because I have to get ready. This is my second cup of coffee <laughs> to get me ready for the day. Yeah, so today I guess is also a story time video. <laughs> story time. I'm Trendy. So today we're talking about some stories from this past trip to Korea. One of the stories that I left with, well, several stories that I left with all revolve around s s just stupidity in clubs. So today I'm telling you one of those stories. As a, as a disclaimer, I guess, I am not a clubber, just generally speaking. I don't go to clubs. I don't like clubs. I do go clubbing quite often in Korea because I don't know, I feel like I'm a lot less likely to have like something dangerous happen. And if I do meet a creeper, I'm probably like six inches taller than him anyway. So <laughs> the probability of there being like a true problem is slim to none. But yeah, so this particular story was at NB2. Actually, all of my terrible clubbing stories are from NB2 actually. Um, why do I keep, why do I always go there because I kind of think of it as old faithful like you'll leave with a story So it's like if I just want a story for the night I could just stand there and do nothing and there will be a story to tell by the end of it this particular night um, Yeah, I was hanging out with some friends we went to the store that's like right next to it It's called the go-go store that also became old faithful because like you don't want to go home, but you don't want to stay in the club, so you go over there and you hang out. I met a group of you guys, actually. You guys are so cool. This has nothing to do with the Creeper story, but they were just really, really nice. I forgot their names. I'm so sorry. I remember you're from Spain, right? You're from Spain, and you had some friends with you, and you guys watched the videos, and I was so touched and so awkward. Sorry. Um, I also, on a different occasion going to MB2, I met another, actually I saw that one subscriber a few times. <laughs> she was um, from the Netherlands, if I'm not mistaken. I'm so sorry, I'm so bad. I ended up meeting quite a lot of you guys actually when I was in, not even just in Seoul, it was in MB2. <laughs> yeah, um, but no, that was great. Anyway, met you guys, I was feeling good. I was like, yeah, party, I met some cool people. Blah, blah, blah. I go in, and MB2 is kind of known to be like a hip hop place. Why am I still pressing this into my skin? I don't need to be at this point. MB2 is kind of known for being, you know, the place for hip hop. You listen to hip hop, Korean hip hop, American hip hop, other hip hops of other sorts. And I'm down with that. I'm not an EDM person when it comes to like going out. I feel like there's nothing you can really, like what dances can you do but jump up and down and like, I didn't come for aerobics, jazzercise. Anyway, but yeah, so that's why I go there so often because it's very popular so there's a lot of people and I don't like to go clubbing with like 12 people in the club, that's lame. Yeah, we're in MB2 and because I'm there for music, I'm there minding my own business, drinking my free drink, looking up at the sky, and you know, listening to music, you know, doing my thing, chilling by myself. I am a wall hugger by choice <laughs> because I don't like people, I'm not a people person. Whenever I tell people that I'm pretty introverted, they don't understand what I'm talking about. I'm pretty, I'm like an introverted, ext extroverted introvert. Like I know how to talk in social situations, it's just like, I prefer not to. <laughs> so like whenever I'm in a club, I'm just like minding my own business until something comes along and something to talk about comes along. Um, I'm there with some friends and me and my friends have like a system. We know that when a creeper guy comes around, cause they will, we look out for each other. We're there to, you know, tell everybody back off. And if she wants you in your presence, she will beckon you over. She will call for you. This particular time, there was this little creeper. He was like 4'11", really short. 
He was a little creeper and he came over to my friend and started to like pull her over, like pull her close, right? And I know my friend very, very well, so I could see her like clenching up, like, ugh, like get away from me. So being who I am, being the friend and the bodyguard, um, I like gently take both of my hands and like push his hands down. And I, there's no way he could hear me no matter what language I spoke. He was a little Korean guy, by the way. Um, so I just shook my head, no. So you get the gist, she's not interested. Um, I think he completely misread what my body language was saying, like completely, because I guess he thought that meant, no, I want you, which is not what it was at all. He looks like he's 14. He looks like he got in here, like, not legally. Like, he has a fake. There is no way that this dude is actually of age to be in this place. So that's all the more reason, like, I'm not trying to get my friend to have a case because she's messing around with a 14 year old, especially me. Because personally, I'm not into short guys. And second, you're a fetus, get away from me. Anyway, he looks at me and he turns around to the back like this and he starts shimmy, shimmy, shimmy and closer, right? I take both of my hands. First of all, I was looking out into the distance. It's not like we were meeting eyes or anything that would, you know, coax you closer and makes you want to come towards me. I was being very distant and very like not interested. Like there was no way to to misconstrue how I was feeling. I was not interested. Goes for it one more time, the little shoulder, the little shoulder. This time I like forcibly push him, like actually push the crap out of him. Cause I'm like, dude, back up. He looks me in the eyes looks at my boobs, looks me in the eyes, and just plop, puts his head in it. Put right in the cleavage. Like, there was no, there was no, oh, maybe he tripped. There was no, <laughs> there was no like, oh, maybe cause he's short, he like went in for a hug, but even still he should not be touching me. I just was like, okay. And then it pushed like hard as hell. And then I just started screaming like, curse words I was flipping out and it was so funny because I was flipping out in Korean so that freaked him out too and then everyone around like turned around and was like oh wow someone's mad oh crap it's a foreigner it's a wig again and he slithered away with his tail between his legs and hopefully he got kicked out I don't know but like how I don't understand because I've actually talked to friends before and they're like, this crap does not happen to me, Kendall. I don't know what it is about you, <laughs> but you attract some weird weirdos, like not kind of weird. You attract the weirdest of them all. I mean, I guess to an extent I'm weird too. So I guess people think, oh, I can be comfortable with how weird I am because Kendall's weird as hell. But like, there's a limit. <laughs> I don't know why I'm going for such a heavy beat today. It's not like I'm going anywhere really important. Also, I know I know someone's gonna ask like, well, what were you wearing? Which is the dumbest question that anyone can ever ask because I should be able to walk in there butt naked. I won't, but I should be able to walk in there butt naked and if you get no consent, you can't touch me. It doesn't matter what I was wearing, but for those of you curious, um, I was wearing a very conservative shirt like there was nothing showing there was nothing showing it was a t-shirt it was a gray t-shirt and that gray t-shirt that is not the first time i had something kind of like ew happen because of that gray t-shirt in korea in america it's fine no one really does anything and no one really does anything as extreme as putting their face in your boobs in korea either but i got I got attention, but I wouldn't say it was welcome attention. Um, I, wore, I wore that shirt one other time. Well, no, that's not true. I wore it once in Gangnam. And Gangnam is like FB central. Like seriously, everyone has money or at least are currently pretending they have money if they go out clubbing and <laughs> clubbing in Gangnam. But this particular time I was wearing that shirt. I'll put a picture of the shirt somewhere if I have it. I think I put an Instagram post wearing the shirt Actually, I have the outfit I wore when the dude put his put his face in my boob, so you can be the judge, whatever. There's just a whole lot of damn, damn. 
Like y'all ain't never seen titties before? Like what's going on? This is Gangnam, you've seen some fake ones at least. <laughs> Necessary like introducing yourself to me. Like no, I don't need to know you. You're not worth knowing. But yeah, but anyway, yeah, I, I wore that shirt that time. And then I wore it a few times in between because I was talking to my friend and I was like, I just don't, it wasn't like a compliment. I didn't feel complimented in Gangnam. So I was like, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't wear it anymore. And she was like, no, you better wear it. It's act like this place is your stage. Yeah, walk around like the world's your stage and that everyone is just an audience and they're lucky that they got invited to the show. I wore it again and the last time I wore it was the day someone put their face in my boobs. So, I don't wanna call it a lucky shirt cause it's not. <laughs> That's not luck, that wasn't like a good thing. I've been doing my base makeup for like 20 minutes. This is ridiculous. But this is the most important part, and I don't know if it's blended because it's really hard to see on my monitor, so if it's not blended by the end of this, okay. From what I can see, my eyebrows look good though. Um, Misha pencils. I just really love Misha. I feel like Misha, a lot of the things that I'm like, I can't go without that, I won't go without that, it's a Misha product. Crap. Oh, crap, it dried. <laughs> Someone came to my door. I love these little pointed Q-tips. I'm such a nerd. I'm like, pointed Q-tips! Yeah. Anyway, what was I saying before? I bought it like a crazy amount of lip tints. And like, admittedly, most of them look exactly the same, so there's no reason to buy all of those lip tints. When I was, okay, when I was in Korea, right, I was um, trying to find this specific eyeliner um, in Misha. And I don't know if it's discontinued. I don't know if they just never have it in stock because I went to one and they said they don't have it anymore. Then I went to another one and it just said it's sold out. So I'm like, so, but yeah, admittedly, I do have a lot of stories about meeting weirdos, yet again, because there's something about me that attracts weirdos. I'm just curious, like, what is like the normal amount of creepers you should meet in your lifetime? Because I feel like I've exceeded that, <laughs> like actually by a lot. This is a theory from a friend of mine, so it's not my theory, but my friend's theory is that I scare off normal people. <laughs> admittedly, I do have one of the hardest RBFs that have ever graced this planet. I don't know if that's like a compliment or not, but I do look hella mad most of the time. According to my friend's theory, that scares off normal human beings that can read faces, <laughs> but the ones that don't, they go in for the kill. I'm trying to get that Edward Avila nose. Aww. So yeah, that's the look. Um, I didn't really explain anything in this video. So if you're curious about anything that I use, you can go down in the description box. All right, I'll see you guys later.